I'm all, all right. Hello. Good. Let me just share my screen. Okay. Okay. Uh, so today we're gonna have uh, more of a discussion uh, than a session on uh, just how credit risk analysis works and how the modeling works. Um, so you're gonna have a session, I believe, on Thursday about modeling, and you have been having. Uh, those sessions for a while now so we're just gonna have a discussion about these things so let's start okay so um so credit risk so uh, um, normally it's not uh, implemented in Ethiopia at a large scale as it is uh, on the international parking uh, the banking market but uh, so credit risk uh, is just uh, statistical or qualitative uh, the quantitative measure of the possibility of a borrower uh, returning or defaulting on their uh, not returning uh, their financial obligations so uh, the risk of uh, when you when you lend as a bank when you lend a person an amount of money there is um, some probability or risk that uh, the person might not be able to return the money on the time allocated or even might not return it at all. So this risk is called credit, credit risk. So credit risk is just uh, how the risk that you take when lending a person. So uh, normally uh, banks rely on this number when lending a potential customer the money so uh, i i believe uh, you guys know about credit score yeah i think it's widely used in the western world so the credit score shows the higher the better actually uh, credit score is a bit different than the credit risk so it's almost the difference so credit score is just shows how uh, the how likely you are able to get a higher credit okay so uh, crucial actually for banks uh, and financial institutions to manage and mitigate their potential losses so as i've said since this is a risk they need to know uh, the risk and they need to prepare for this risk right so if a person is risky they need to uh, like maybe minimize the risk by not lending that person or by minimizing the amount of money they are going to um, lend um, okay uh, i am out of it, right guys Okay, good. Okay. So the, the objective of this, uh, just calculating this risk and analyzing it is just to evaluate the credit worthiness of the borrowers and just to minimize the risk of defaults. So defaults means the probability that or not being returned the money or not being paid back just not being repaid right so uh, is that person worthy of credit just uh, is that person worthy of us giving him the money is the first thing and just to minimize the risk of uh, not having uh, that money back is just 
the objective of just minimizing this risk is the objective of paid risk. So that's what you are going to be working on for this week. So there are uh, three types of risk. The first one is default risk. So when the uh, borrower is not able to pay back the principal, or so the principal is the amount of money that you borrow. Like for instance, if you borrow a million bar, so that's the principal. The interest is what you pay on top of that, right? So just be, be uh, just uh, it could be a compound interest, a simple interest, and so on. But then the amount of money that you pay on top of the principal is called the interest money. And concentration risk uh, when a large like it's the type of risk that happens when a large exposure to single party or uh, a group of related counterparties are involved. Uh, sometimes you can refer to this to hard company risk. And when a counter risk is when uh, the risk that occurs when a, a company is not able to repay or is unwilling to meet, uh, to pay back the money. I think, uh, I think uh, like a couple of months back, Ethiopia was facing uh, this type of risk, right? Okay, so uh, we have seen like the importance of credit risk is just to, minim to minimize the potential loss that occurs to the bank, uh, to help uh, the lender or the bank or the financial institution to make a good or informed decision when lending the, the money. This is credit worthiness. And just to uh, enable the person uh, to build a better portfolio management and risk mitigation, uh, support regulatory compliances, and contribute to the financial stability. Because the finance is uh, much more de dependent on this money this like uh, uh, process so the key concepts that you need to know are uh, the first thing is uh, probability of de default uh, that this is the likelihood or the probability of the person not returning the money or defaulting on a loan so uh, loss given by a loan is uh, i think let me change the place Uh, wait. Okay, sorry for that. Uh, I had to play, change places. So it's uh, it's better now, right? Um, let's move move on. So, uh, as I have said, the probability of default or the probability that the person that we have lent or borrow the money will not return it is the probability of the default loss on uh, the default is just the amount of uh, money that the lender will occur or will, will incur uh, when the borrower will not return the money so for instance uh, if you uh, lend, uh, lend some uh, someone a uh, million bar, and that person only return is uh, 750 work. So the 150 work is going to be the loss. And exposure at uh, default is just the total value exposed to the default at the time of the default. So expected low loss is just the multiplication of these three things. Okay, so uh, let's look at the components of credit risk analysis. So you're going to be doing the analysis, right? 
Um, so, um, okay. So we're gonna have two types of analysis, the qualitative and quantitative analysis, but we're gonna be uh, more focused on the quantitative one. Because that's what we're going to be doing. So the first thing is a uh, credit score model. So you're gonna be scoring that person depending on the credit risk, probability of default estimation, probability of default. We have talked about this one. Uh, loss of a given default and exposure at default. These are going to be the analysis that you are going to be doing in order to find, uh, just in order to analyze the credit risk of that person. Okay. And the quantitative are just my, the, the, from the financial statement and ratios, uh, credit hi history. You're going to be looking at the credit, like the history of that person and see if he, like from the part if he is repaying the, his loans on time and so on and so on. Uh, and the financial statement is going to tell us his uh, like cash flow, inflow and outflow. Uh, and the economy, the industry and the economic condition is just to say that uh, if the person that um, you are le le lending is in a dying industry, uh, you might not be able to return that money and the management quality is just on the management side. Okay, so, uh, okay, so when dealing with credit risk modeling, uh, so it's just to use the statistics and mathematical technique of uh, quantifying the risk. So risk is not um, something that you count, but you can uh, quantify it, right? So you might see it's risky, it's not risky or so on, but not easy to uh, measure it in numbers, right? So these are th this is where the credit risk modeling comes in. So the type of uh, modeling is just, the first one is credit score model. So uh, we have talked about this one earlier. So in the, US and the Western countries, they use this credit score model. So the higher the credit score, the more credit you're gonna get. So it's just a measure of credit worthiness. So the more, the higher the number, the more you are worthy of credit. And the next one is a default prediction model or credit risk model. This is just to predict the likelihood of the default or the, or, or, uh, the probability of not paying it back. So these two are more or less uh, different things, right? Uh, like uh, almost the exact opposite. So uh, just to recap on this, uh, the benefits of credit risk uh, modeling is just to improve the assessment of any decision making. And instead of doing it ma manually, the model could predict uh, the these things and in us the portfolio optimization and more efficiency on capital allocation and the challenges are it's hard to get a uh, clean or a good uh, data the financial data that you are going to use in order to build the model uh, the accuracy and the limitation of the model is another risk or challenge uh, like regulation in the market change uh, data and feature modeling uh, or engineering are the other uh, like challenges or obstacles in this the modeling okay so the type of data that you are going to use uh, are normally the financial data like the history the credits like uh, in we don't have a credit uh, card or anything like, like that here, but uh, the credit history and the debit uh, level are some of the financial data you, you're gonna have. Transactional data, how that person spends his money, like the purchase history, transactional amount and so on, and the demographic data. So you, you're gonna have these features in order to build the model. 
And the key thing that you are going to the key feature for modeling is just to accurately uh, me measure the, like the prediction and the score, the default prediction and the score. So uh, from some researches, you might find uh, like uh, some of the things that the credit score or the default uh, might be uh, dependent on, like for instance, the bank size. So uh, uh, the bank size has a big and um, a positive uh, influence on the credit uh, risk. So the higher the bank size uh, and the more the risk, the credit risk. So higher banks uh, might not have, might have a bigger, might, might take a bigger risk when it comes to credit risk. And this is the same as loan growth. Uh, when the banks, when, when a bank starts uh, giving out more and more loans, the probability of uh, having a default is higher. Efficiency ratio is actually a negative side, a negative influence because the more efficient the bank is, the less the risk of default. Profitability is also uh, have a ne negative effect on the credit risk. And capital adequacy, actually, when we have more uh, capital, the more we are, uh, we are going to face a credit risk. And uh, GDP has a negative one. Uh, inflation has a positive because when inflation grows, the merchants might not be able to have, uh, might not be able to sell their products at the price that, that they had in mind. So they're gonna have a hard time paying it back. And interest also has a positive uh, effect because the more, the higher the, uh, uh, in interest rate that uh, bank has on the loan, the harder is going to be the for the borrower to pay back on the and exchange rate is also has a positive. It's the same as the, it's similar with the inflation. So, uh, so this is just a highlight. But I wanted to have uh, I wanted us to have a discussion just to have just to see how. You understand this, and uh, because you you you're gonna need to have a solid understanding of these concepts before uh, starting the project. So, yeah, I'm gonna want uh, like to hear back from you guys what you have understood and uh, how you plan to progress with the project. So let me just stop the presenting and. So, uh, is it clear first? Um, okay, Abraham and Junior understands it. What about the rest? Okay. What about Yab's right, uh, Nadia? Okay. Okay, good. So um, who can speak and who can just open their, their, their mic and uh, tell us about uh, what they have understood? Or should I start calling out names? Okay, um, let's start with Abra.
Am I audible, guys? Uh, hello? Yeah, okay. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes. All right. Uh, I think uh, yeah, I have uh, some insights about uh, credit um, scoring uh, now. Uh, also, the, the category between uh, qualitative and uh, quantitative, you explained that. Uh, that 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 part also uh, uh, gave me some uh, some insights, and also the challenges you, you mentioned. <laughs> so uh, and again, uh, yeah, the types, the types, uh, the the default uh, and uh, concentrate uh, different risk risk uh, types you you mentioned. I have understood it, uh, those concepts also. I think uh, I am, yeah, uh, I am good to uh, to progress to the the challenge uh, now. Uh, okay, this is it from me. Okay, uh, thank you, Abraham. Uh, what about uh, Nadia? Okay. Uh, Nadia, we are waiting for you. Okay. Um, in the meantime, uh, does anyone know about uh, debit and credit by show of, uh, by show of hands? hands? Hello? Okay, uh, does anyone know about debit and credit because it's uh one of the features of the data we gave you is uh, amount which is uh, which has a debit and the credit okay junior can you explain what you know and for the others uh, who also understands that Why are you guys so quiet? Um, okay. Yeah, Absra. Yes, okay, Abra. Uh, okay, I think credit uh, is when uh, you take uh, a money which uh, you don't have, but uh, you you plan to pay it back later, and. Uh, and David is uh, it's a it's a deduction from uh, the money you or you already have uh, on the bank. I think. Okay. Is that right? Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, you are partially right. Like uh, I'm also looking at what uh, what's written on the. Uh, the message so uh, both of you are actually right so it depends 
So it depends on uh, the account. So in accounting, we have accounts, right? So uh, for the assets, uh, for the assets part, like cash and uh, so on and so on, credits uh, and then the credit is the meaning of uh, credit and debit is different for the liability, right? Um, so, uh, so credit, uh, when you receive money for you, just we're talking about you. So when you receive a money, the money is credited on your account. So in that, in that sense, credit means like adding it, right? When you use the money, it's yeah, like it's debited from your uh, account. So credit and uh, you can look at uh, like for the card account, that's how credit and debit works. But for the owner's equity and so on, credit and debit is uh, the exact opposite. Like you have said, Abraham. Um, so credit, you might think it as, uh, like as you have said, liability, right? So when you are, your liability increases, it's credit. Your credit is increasing and the liability de decreases, it's uh, de de uh, debited when you pay it. And for the owner's equity, it's the exact opposite. Like uh, when uh, it increases, it's uh, credit, uh, it's the de 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 uh, debit, I'm sorry. Uh, and when it's decreased, it's uh, credit. So uh, you need to know the, the account, you know, just to uh, have, just to see when it increases, it's credit or the debit and uh, just the same for the opposite. So, but for uh, what's given to you, like you are on the bank side. So when uh, it's added, it's not credit, it's debit because, uh, Okay, and I think it's going to be complex, uh, yeah, but uh, on the bank side, when you put your money in the bank, it's a debit for the bank, but it's credit for you. It's credited for you, but it's a debit. It's the bank is going to have uh, to pay back, right? So positive means debit uh, from the, the customer account uh, from the bank side, and uh, credit is a negative. Uh, from the customer account again. So we're talking about uh, from the point of view of the bank, but uh, on the effect on the customer's account. So uh, like just think of it as you are the bank and you have customers and when uh, money has added or the amount is in positive. Uh, yeah, the debit. Um, is it clear or did I make it even more? Okay. Uh, so uh, does anyone have uh, questions? Um, okay, just, uh, okay, um, I think uh, just to add on that, just think of that if the term debit and credit is more of confusing, you can think of it as um, it's uh, a devil in free. Like in accounting, there is a term, the uh, devil in free account. So uh, whatever amount you credit from an account, you have to uh, debit the same amount in another account. Okay, like uh, let's say uh, you have your company had a car. 
and uh, like your company sold the car and got something, right? So uh, like the cash is going to increase and the, amount, the, like, the amount of cars you had is going to decrease, right? So that's the effect of credit and debit. So it's not just one account, one in three, it's a double in three. We, we, which means double, uh, like the dividend of the credit is going to go in parallel, but in different accounts. So whatever uh, thing that you are going to decrease in one account, you have to increase in another account. So I just thought, uh, just to add that one. So for assets, uh, just for the example that we had, um, when, uh, the car is going to be on the credit side because you just lost the car and the money is going to be on the debit side or the cash is going to be on the debit side. But as I've explained earlier, liability, when you pay your liability or when your liability uh, is decreased, it's on the debit side and when it's uh, decreased, increased, it's on, on the credit side. So it's different for both cases, right? For the asset and the liability. And yeah, that's uh, just uh, what I wanted to add. Uh, so is it clear, guys? Okay, Abraham. Abraham is always the first one to understand. Okay. Okay, everyone seems, uh, what about the, Nadia is quiet for today. Maybe she's, uh, She's not in a good place to speak. Okay. So any questions from the project side overall? Or is it clear so, so far? Okay. Okay, guys. Um, okay, thank you for joining the session. And uh, yeah, um, a good day.